Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video and the next set of videos, we're actually going to go over the integumentary system with emphasis on the skin portion of that. When we cover the integumentary system, there's not a lot of complicated physiology processes and things to memorize like there is in muscles and nervous system and so forth. And so mostly it's just going to be a bunch of isolated facts that you just kind of have to memorize. The main part of this to learn is really the layers of the skin. So we have three layers. We have the epidermis, we have the dermis, which is deep to that, and then the deepest, which is not really part of the integumentary system per se, that's called the hypodermis or the subcutaneous layer. In this video, we're going to discuss the epidermis, and we're going to see that there's actually five or four layers of it, depending on which part you're talking about. The epidermis is the most superficial layer of the integumentary system or your skin. So when you look at somebody's skin, any part of it, the part that you're actually seeing that is closest to the surface or on the surface is the epidermis. The dermis, which we'll cover in the next video, is deep to that. You cannot see the dermis. Okay? The epidermis is composed of a type of tissue called keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. So it's stratified squamous, yes, which just means it's going to have squamous cells mostly in many, many layers, but it's keratinized, and that's very important because we're going to see the major cell type in the epidermis is going to be keratinocytes. There are other areas of the body that have non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, but not the skin. The skin is keratinized, all right? So let's look at the deepest layer of the epidermis, and it's a very thin layer, and we actually see it right here uh, flanking the dermis underneath. The dermis is a sort of bright, whiter tissue right here, and the layer just superficial to that, which is the deepest layer of the epidermis, is called the stratum basal, okay? The stratum basal. So it is the deepest layer, and it's not actually squamous cells. When you actually think of stratified squamous cells, the actual squamous flat cells are more toward the surface. They're more superficial. But generally speaking, the deeper cells of that stratified squamous are actually cuboidal in shape, or sometimes even close to columnar. In general, we just say they're cuboidal. And the stratum basal layer is just one layer of cells, one layer of normally cuboidal cells, okay, even though it's a part of stratified squamous. And each of these cells in the stratum basal layer are actually attached to the underlying basement membrane. So recall that anytime we have epithelial tissue, which is what all this is, the epidermis, the cells that are deepest in the epithelial tissue will be anchored to the underlying connective tissue via a basement membrane. So the basement membrane is kind of right where I'm tracing where my mouse is. It's the, it's the region right between the stratum basal and the dermis. And when I said connective tissue, the dermis is that connective tissue because that's what it's composed of. And within the stratum basal, we're going to have three types of cells. We're going to have one, keratinocytes. These are cells that are going to generate keratin. Keratin is a protein that gives cells rigidity and a lot of protective features. Um, basically by making the cells really hard, okay? And pretty much all the cells that we see up here towards the superficial regions are going to be all keratinized, as we'll see. The second cell type is called a melanocyte. Melanocytes are cells that generate melanin, and the melanin is going to be made inside these cells in organelles called melanosomes. We'll talk about that much later in a separate video. In any case, the melanocytes generate the melanin and they'll eventually deposit that melanin inside the keratinocytes. So the keratinocytes ultimately receive the melanin, but the melanocytes make it, right? And then third, we have cells called tactile cells, and an example of these are Merkel cells. These are cells that are sensitive to touch, and so if you were to apply enough pressure to the skin to where you detect that you have touch, and it really doesn't take a lot for that, Tactile cells will actually transmit signals to sensory nerve endings uh, that are going to be located in the dermis, and then that information will be relayed to the central nervous system so that your brain can detect that you are being touched. Okay? Now, the other thing that's important that I don't have here for whatever reason about the stratum basal is the stratum basal contains cells that are basically stem cells. 
Okay, these cells are constantly dividing. Let's think about why that would be necessary. All these cells in the superficial area of the skin are constantly being sloughed off. Okay, if you take your hand, let's say your right hand, and rub it over your left forearm, you just wiped off a bunch of uh, cells, the superficial cells of the superficial layer, which is actually, we'll see, the stratum corneum. And so you're always losing these skin cells. And so to replace them, the stratum base cell, these cells have to continually divide. Okay, And ultimately what happens is a cell that divides in the stratum base cell will eventually make its way into the next layer, the stratum spinosum, and eventually that cell will make it into the stratum granulosum, and eventually all the way up into the stratum corneum until eventually it gets to the end, and it has nowhere else to go, and it falls off. So basically, whenever these stem cells divide in the stratum base cell, the resulting daughter cells will continually just move more superficially. You can see here this is the direction of cell migration until they make their way to the end, and in which case they will eventually fall off. So your epidermis is continually regenerating itself, and the stratum basal is usually the layer we consider to be the most uh, mitotically active. They're constantly dividing, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. The second layer, which is superficial to the stratum basal, is a little bit thicker. This is the stratum spinosum. Okay? These are gonna be composed of several layers of polygonal keratinocytes. Okay. So really, for the most part, there's just keratinocytes in here, not melanocytes or tactile cells. And these cells are also not flat. They are polygonal in shape. They're not yet flat until we get more superficial. Okay. These also consist of the daughter cells from the stratum basal that are pushed into this layer. So when I mention the cells of the stratum basal divide, the resulting daughter cells initially move more superficially, and they move into the stratum spinosum. Okay and eventually they'll keep moving forward. There is a second cell type in the stratum spinosum that we didn't see in the stratum base cell. And these cells are epidermal dendritic cells, and more specifically, they are Langerhan cells. A dendritic cell in general is an immune cell that phagocytizes foreign material and pathogens, just meaning it protects the tissue from invasion of foreign pathogens, particles, things that could potentially hurt the host and cause infection. Okay, So dendritic cells are an immune cell that are very protective. They're going to initiate the immune response if they encounter a pathogen or even if there's a cancer cell in the epidermis. And one type of cancer cell that we'll actually see uh, which is called a squamous cell carcinoma. These are actually cancers of cells in the stratum spinosum. So it makes sense to have some immune cells in this vicinity. Okay. It's also worth mentioning that the stratum spinosum cells, particularly those closer to the stratum basal, they're going to have a little bit of mitotic activity, but not as much as the cells in the stratum basal. The stratum basal is going to have the most mitotic activity of all. All right, the third layer is a really thin layer. It's only three to five layers of keratinocytes, and this is the stratum granulosum. All right, the stratum granulosum, as I said, three to five layers of keratinocytes. It also contains dendritic cells, specifically these Langerhan cells, and this is the layer where we really consider the process of keratinization to begin. So, in short, keratin, essentially, when it starts being made in the cell, it will essentially start killing the cell. Now, prior to the cell layer in both the stratum spinosum and the stratum basal, these layers did not have keratin in them. Okay, But in the stratum granulosum, this is the layer where keratinization begins. This is where cells start to generate keratin. Okay, And so what's actually happening, if we want to get a little bit detailed, is these cells start making keratohyalin granules. Um, these are granules, or kind of like small um, inclusions, that are going to contain histidine and cysteine-rich proteins, and they ultimately bind keratin filaments together. And so overall, you're getting more and more, more keratin. For the cells in the stratum granulosum that are sort of at the interface with either the stratum corneum or the stratum lucidum, we'll talk about the differences between that in a minute. 
at that interface, those cells of the stratum granulosum are going to secrete lamellar bodies, which contain lipids and proteins into their extracellular space, meaning they're going to exocytose these vesicles containing all these lipids and proteins out of them. Okay? The lipids of that are going to form a lipid envelope around those cells and give them hydrophobic properties, and that's very important. But also what this causes is the cells to start to die, and they lose their nuclei and their organelles. Okay, So the stratum granulosum, these cells are sort of dying. They're not completely dead, but they are dying. And that might not make a lot of sense right now, but as we'll see, it's very important that the cells of the stratum corneum actually be dead. Now, this intermediate layer right here called the stratum lucidum, this is not present in most areas of the epidermis. This is only present in areas where you have thick skin, okay? So what is thick skin? It's just an area where the skin is thicker. And the main areas where you find this are on the palms of your hand, on the soles of your feet, and then in the lips. Basically areas that are gonna be subject to a lot of mechanical stress. So the skin needs to be thicker in those areas in order to protect the underlying connective tissue, okay? And obviously since humans walk on their feet, that area in the sole of the, particularly on the heels, needs to be very thick. And so we have an extra layer in there in thick skin. In thin skin, which is basically everywhere else, so on the arms, on your face, on your legs, belly, back, all that, everywhere that's basically not the palms, soles, and lips, we do not have this layer. The stratum lucidum is absent. It's only present in thick skin. But if you have thick skin, if we're talking about that, the stratum lucidum is the first layer of cells that is a completely dead keratinocytes, okay? So the keratinocytes in the stratum lucidum are dead, okay? Um, they're also clear cells, and it consists of about only two to three layers, okay? They're clear or translucent, but the key is that they're dead, okay? And that's only present in thick skin. If we go to the most superficial layer of the epidermis, we see the stratum corneum. This is by far the thickest layer of the skin. Now, the stratum corneum ranges between about 20 to 30 layers of dead cells. And the number of layers depends on how much mechanical stress that area of the body undergoes. More layers would be in areas where you have more mechanical stress, less layers in less mechanical stressed areas. But it's 20 to 30 layers of dead interlocking keratinized cells. And so what we can say is that in both the stratum lucidum and the stratum corneum, the keratinocytes in here are completely keratinized and they're dead. So overall, the cells in the stratum corneum, one, they are dead, two, they are keratinized, and that keratin actually acts to protect, it's a protective feature of these cells, and three, they're hydrophobic. As we mentioned, we start to get hydrophobic properties in the stratum granulosum, but these cells that are in the stratum corneum are even more hydrophobic. So keratin provides protection, and that hydrophobic property allows them to be uh, more water resistant, and that's an important property of the skin. If you actually take a shower, after you get out of the shower, you'll see some water droplets on you. They don't go into the skin, they actually just kind of run down the skin, and that's because the stratum corneum is water resistant, okay? Now, there's a note down here if you can see it. Migration of a keratinocyte from the stratum basal, where we initially have the mitosis to replace dead skin cells, the migration from that layer to the stratum corneum takes about two weeks. So in order for a cell to divide from the stratum basal and ultimately make its way up to the stratum corneum, that's gonna take about two weeks. Once that keratinocyte is in the stratum corneum, that dead keratinized cell usually remains there in the exposed stratum corneum layer for an additional two weeks, okay, after which it's going to be sloughed off. So overall, the process of dividing from the stratum basal cells and making its way all the way to the stratum corneum and eventually falling off, that process is going to take approximately one month. Now, one thing that I mentioned in this video more implicitly that you may have noticed is that the cells in the stratum basal are very much alive. They're mitotically active. They're dividing, so they have to be alive. But the cells in the stratum corneum are dead completely dead. 
And I mentioned that cells in the stratum granulosum are starting to die. So what we could say is that these cells, they get increasingly dead going from the stratum basal to the stratum cornea. They're dying as they go out. Let's think about reasons why that is. The first reason, which actually occurs in the stratum granulosum, is that these cells are losing their nuclei and organelles. Okay? That's a big reason why, as cells move out from here, they start to die. Okay? But there's another thing you should think about. Ask yourself, is the epidermis vascular, meaning does it have a blood supply? The answer is no. There is no blood vessels in the epidermis. Now the dermis, is there blood supply in the dermis? Yes. The dermis is vascular, whereas the epidermis is avascular. So the stratum basal, seeing as these cells are directly bordering the dermis, they're able to pick up a lot of those nutrients that cells need to live and be mitotically active from the blood vessels in the dermis. But as we go farther out from the dermis, the cells get increasingly dead because by the time we get to the stratum lucidum and the stratum corneum, the oxygen and the glucose and all those things that these cells need to live, they can't diffuse that far. And so that's why these cells are dead out here. Okay? Now it's okay that they're dead because their only function is to protect. Okay? And the protection is imparted by the hydrophobic properties and the keratinization that occurs in these cells. But make sure you understand the reason why these cells in the stratum corneum are dead and they get increasingly dead as you go more superficial. Because the dermis is vascular and so the stratum basal and to some extent the stratum spinosum can receive those nutrients via diffusion uh, from the dermis blood vessels. But as you go further out than that, the diffusion doesn't go that far very well, and so these cells will ultimately die. Okay, And that's pretty much what there is to the epidermis. The major things you should know for your course about the epidermis are, first of all, make sure you know what the layers are, from superficial to deep or deep to superficial, depending on what's asked. Also make sure you know the difference between thick and thin skin. Thick skin has the stratum lucidum layer, whereas thin skin does not. Thin skin only has the other four layers. And then also understand the functions and the general things that take place within each of these layers. All right, so hopefully this video made sense to you and you learned a lot. In the next video, we're gonna discuss the dermis and the hypodermis, so join us there. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.